We begin by thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for gathering us here and giving us the tawfiq again to participate in the majalis that have been organized for the commemoration of the martyrdom of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam and his family and his companions. Yesterday I began by discussing the school of Najaf. I talked about the school of Najaf. And I explained that in that school, one of the key aspects or one of the key strategies that they give us for self-improvement is to reflect. And of course, reflection is something that has different subject matters. Reflection is something that has different levels. You can get into deeper levels of reflection. You can think about something on the surface and then you can go beyond that surface and go deeper and deeper into that issue for many, many layers. But there's one thing, there's one topic that the Holy Quran stresses upon and the rest of our scriptural literature as well, drawing on the Holy Quran focuses on. And that is to think about the blessings and the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the reason for this is that it is something that is very tangible for us. There is a level of reflection on the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is possible for all ages, whether you're young or whether you're older. Depending on where you find yourself in life, there's always something to think about. There's always a further level of refinement of that thought to go into. As you all know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Holy Quran, وَإِن تَعُدُّوا نِعْمَةُ اللَّهِ لَا تُخْسُوهَا If you were to count and to enumerate the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you would not be able to do that. Now usually, when we have a statement like that, it is demotivational. If I said to you, no matter how hard you try, you will never pass that test. You say, okay, then, then I'll stop trying. There's no point in doing that. If I say to you, no matter how much you practice, you will never be a professional football player. That will make some people think, well, in that case, I'll sit down and do something else. But why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala express this to us in this way if it's not supposed to be demotivational? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't want us to stop. I.e., He is telling us that the, the potential for thinking about the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so vast that you don't need to fear that you will run out of things to think about. It is a practice that we are supposed to have inculcated in our lives to such an extent that it is something that we do daily, something that we do maybe perhaps more than daily, more than in one day to think about the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon us and to think about the way he has blessed this world and graced this world with bounty upon bounty. And that in itself is a pathway towards gratitude. The key benefit of thinking about the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to become grateful for them. Now sometimes you'll hear people say, Islam is the religion of peace. Sometimes you'll hear them say, Islam is the religion of submission. In honest truth, you can add another type of phrase. You can say that Islam is the religion of gratitude. And why do I say that? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself, when he talks about the paths in life for the human being, he distinguishes the path as two types. He says in the Holy Quran in Surah Al-Insan, Inna hadayna hussabil, imma shakiran wa imma kafura. Meaning that indeed we have guided him the way, guided the human being along the way, that either they are grateful or they are ungrateful. So you can see here the whole path moving towards our perfection is the path of gratefulness. And the path that is away from that perfection is to do something called kufr. Kufr in its linguistic meaning means to cover over. Just like, for example, when someone does something, but we don't want to recognize what they've done. We act in an in a, in a, in a ungrateful manner. 
even though we may be aware of the bounty that someone has given us. Okay? So you'll see that people that are ungrateful, it's not like you know, they don't have anything to be grateful for, but they fail to recognize what they should be grateful for. Or they f even if they recognize their benefactor, they're ungrateful towards their benefactor. They cover over the fact that they should be grateful. In another verse in the Holy Quran, in Surah An-Nahl, again illustrating the point that the whole path towards perfection, the whole path towards self-improvement is through gratitude, is this verse. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran, وَاللَّهُ أَخْرَجَكُمْ مِن بُطُونِ أُمَّهَاتِكُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ شَيْئًا وَجَعَلَ لَكُمُ السَّمْعَ وَالْأَبْصَارَ وَالْأَفْئِدَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ which means that and Allah has extracted you from the wombs of your mothers, not knowing anything. And he made for you hearing and vision and intellect that perhaps you would be grateful. Okay, or so that you would be grateful. So you can see here again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explaining the creation of the human being, how the human being comes out of their mother's womb and they come into a world where everything is new they have to learn everything from scratch they have to learn about you know the different uh, you know habits that people have in society they have to learn what different things are they don't know anything but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them the means he gives them the means he gives them hearing he gives them vision and he gives them that intellect with which they are able then to get a grasp of the world and they get a grasp of the world and live in the world. And as they live in the world, it becomes upon them to start reflecting on the things that they have. And to ask themselves, truly, when have they ever received a benefit that hasn't come from somewhere? When has a benefit just appeared from nowhere? Children, usually, in the beginning at least, are not very grateful. Why are they not grateful? Because for them, benefits are just there. They just come. Even people who become spoilt, they become spoilt because they're just used to having lots of benefits and good things. Okay? But when the human being lives in the world and as they grow up and as they go into their adulthood, they realize they have to fight for every single benefit. There's nothing that comes free in this world. Right? And as they realize that and they look back and they think about all of the benefits that happen in their lives. Or for example, they themselves become parents. And they realize that there is not one benefit that the child has that the parent doesn't struggle for. If it's a good night's sleep, the mother's awake. Yeah? If it's a comfortable house, the father's been out all day. And so on and so forth. We realize that benefits don't just come from anywhere. So gratitude is fundamental to the path of, to the path of perfection. And it will not surprise you also then that gratitude has been considered something that is within our natural disposition. It has been considered to be fitri. In the Islamic intellectual tradition, when they talk about things that are shared amongst all human beings, okay, something that is part of the natural disposition of the human being, they say shukrul mun'im is one of the principles. Shukrul mun'im means being thankful to the one who has blessed or who has given you, who has benefacted you, okay? That is something natural. And you find that very easily and obviously in society as well. Especially when the need is more. So for example, if you've been on a long run, okay? And you come home and there's no drinks in the fridge, yeah? And there's someone who has a bottle of water there, they give you a bottle of water. You feel the thankfulness there. You're late to pick your kids up from school. No parking spaces. Someone waves at you and says you can take this one. You feel the thankfulness within. And in fact, the thankfulness, that principle is so deep within us that sometimes we even run away from the obligation that results from thankfulness. We run away from shukr al -munim. So if I say, please come over to my house, you might say, no, 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 inshallah. Because you know, then what do you have to do? You have to invite me over to your house as well, right? Because the shukrul mun'im is so deeply ingrained that 
even we will try and avoid, we'll try and avoid it in certain circumstances as well. Okay? So now, when we look at this and we understand the fitra, the fitra, of course, the verse of the fitra is 30-30. It's one of those easy verses to remember. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَأَقِمْ وَجْهَكَ لِلدِّينِ فِتْرَةَ اللَّهِ الَّتِي فَطْرَ النَّاسَ عَلَيْهَا لَا تَبْدِيلَ لِخَلْقِ اللَّهِ ذَلِكَ الدِّينُ الْقَيِّمُ وَلَكِنَّ أَكْثَرَ النَّاسِ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ So this translates as, so, uh, فَأَقِمْ وَجْهَكَ لِلدِّينِ Pay attention to religion. What is religion? Religion is the natural disposition. فِتْرَةَ اللَّهِ الَّتِي فَطْرَ النَّاسَ عَلَيْهَا The natural disposition that Allah has uh, created man upon. There is no change in this fitra. So that issue of thanking the mun'im is something that doesn't change. Okay? That is the straight religion. The thing is that most people seem to not know this. Okay? So while it is within our very nature to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to recognize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for those bounties and to feel obligated to Allah. Because if He's the one benefacting you, then the natural part of that is to do, sh is to do thankfulness and gratitude to that but also to have a sense that there is something that you need to repay. There is, there is a way in which you have, to mo you have to mobilize yourself in order to repay all of these bounties that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given. But the thing is that most people don't know. And in a very uh, interesting uh, introduction to the Hadith of Mi'raj written by uh, Sa'adat Parwar, who was one of the key mystical students of Allah Taba Tabai, he explains the reason why he thinks most people are unaware. He says that most people are unaware because of material veils. Okay? What are material veils? What is a veil, firstly? A veil is something that covers something else up, so that such that you can't see behind that. Okay? So for example, if I put my hand in front of my eyes, it becomes a veil. You can't see my eyes from behind the hand. But a veil has got two aspects to it. One is that it hides something, but the other aspect of it is that it's very clear to the person who's looking at it. So if you look at a curtain, for example, while the curtain hides what's behind it, you can see the curtain very clearly. It almost puts itself forward and manifests itself so that you can't see what's behind it. And the world of matter is like that. The world of matter hides the metaphysical. The physical world and everything in it. So all the things that you see, all the things that you hear, yeah, all the things that your mind become occupied with, this, these things are very clear for you. You see them straight away. Okay? But with their clarity, they also hide something that's behind them. And that is, of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's hand in everything. This is what I was speaking about yesterday, that sometimes what happens as we build our cognitive framework for the world, we start to see that world without the real forces that are behind it. And so this is why the message of Islam has come to show us what is, what is behind that. So the fitra and thanking and being grateful is part of the is 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 part of one thing. So the religion of Islam and the movement towards perfection is gratitude, and gratitude is part of the fitra, and the fitra is the deen. Okay. Now, the other part is is that we cannot be thankful and we cannot have gratitude without recognition. Recognition is at the core of gratitude. And this is why we have something very interesting in our hadith. In a hadith, I believe it's from Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi afdalu salati wa salam, he says, awwal ad-deen ma'rifatu. The first step in religion is the knowledge of God. Now usually we think of ma'rifatullah as like the end of the path, right? It's true. The knowledge of Allah or knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has got stages, stations, and depth. 
But for somebody to have even a part of religion, they need to have a recognition of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the quickest path to that recognition is through reflecting over his bounties. And the reason for that is, is that as we reflect into the intricacies of his bounty, we start to see that the universe is filled with wisdom. As we look more into those bounties, we see that this world cannot be created in vain. We have in the Holy Quran a group of people, they think of Allah while they're lying down, while they're sitting up, while they're standing. And they say to themselves, Rabbana ma khalaqta hadha batila. You haven't created this in, in vain. And as you realize that things are not in vain, you realize there must be a Lord. There must be someone who was intelligent, someone who was wise, who created all of these interrelated structures. If you take any single part of your body and think about all of the bones and tissues that go together for you to make the simplest movement, yeah, you will see that that complexity is not something that pops out of nowhere. I sometimes give this example. Imagine I had all the parts of this iPad. Yeah? I take, it, take this iPad apart and I keep it in parts. Then I put it all in a box and I shake the box really, really hard. Okay? How many of you feel I will be able to pull an iPad out after that shaking? I shake it really hard. What if I shake it for a really long time? Yeah? I shake that around. All the chips and the you know, you know, screen and everything like that. Am I going to get an iPad out of that? Okay. So when we talk about the world, when we talk about the most basic proteins that make up life, those are way more complicated than this iPad. And the particles that we're talking about in the universe, they're not in a small box. They're all over the place, all over the universe. So the thesis that things come from nothing is a very unlikely thesis. It's the kind of thesis that actually makes no sense to us. If you walk into a room and you find a mess on the floor, yeah, you don't say, oh, that's probably come from nowhere. Yeah? You look around and you say, who made the mess? Right? So to think of things as coming from nowhere is something that is counterintuitive for us. It doesn't make sense to us. So as we think more and more about the complexity, more and more into the depths of the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we see with further and further depth his wisdom. And of course, one of the beautiful things in Dua Arafah of Imam al-Hussein alayhi salam is the intense detail in which he explains the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you look at that dua from the beginning, it is talking about the bounties of Allah. He talks about bounties that usually we wouldn't think of. So he says, for example, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kept us safe through all the trials and tribulations of the previous generations by keeping us in the loins of our parents. We simply were protected from going out into the world where people went through very, very different and harsh circumstances at times. We missed all of the periods where whole peoples were destroyed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for their disobedience. And we came out at a time where look at the time we live in. Material uh, benefits are so easy. We all have clothes, we all have food, and so on and so forth. And each and every person, it doesn't matter whenever you're born, you always find this reflection to be such a pertinent one. He talks about how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pays intense detail to each and every one of us. He fashions us, knowing us, knowing the way we will be. Yeah? And he fashions us all individually. He doesn't put that burden on us. So he doesn't give us the paintbrush and say, fashion yourself. He does it for us. That itself is a bounty. These kind of, this kind of bounty and this kind of recognition of, 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 of these issues shows a very deep reflection into the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He also talks about how 
then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increases us year upon year. And through that increase, through the unfolding of life, He makes clear His presence. He makes clear His proof upon us. He makes clear His wisdom. And then makes worship incumbent upon us. Because after showing us His bounty, uh, it is Allah who takes the first step. After showing us His bounty, then when we recognize that, then it becomes incumbent upon us. You know, there's a uh, story again, this one is from the Holy Prophet wasallam, that he would pray so much in the nighttime until his feet became swollen. So one day, one of his wives asks him, they say, you know, you are forgiven. forgiven. Allah has said that he's forgiven your, you know, what has come before and what comes after. So why do you put yourself through this, this trouble? It's, it's a lot to pray so much that your feet are swollen. And the Holy Prophet b responds by saying, should I not be a grateful servant? Should I not be a grateful servant? So that gratitude involves a reaction. So Imam Hussein makes clear that then uh, the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is made incumbent. Uh, and that Allah is not satisfied in just giving us some bounties. He gives us one bounty and another bounty and another bounty, despite our own ignorance, inertia, and ingratitude. And I'm going to read you just one part of this dua, so you, again, you can, you can remind yourself, because dua, uh, you know, dua Arafah, I know many of you will have read it during uh, the Hajj, day, uh, Hajj days, and Yawm al Arafah. Let me read you this passage here. He says, And I bear witness, O my God, with my true belief and the fortitude of the determination of my conviction and the purity of my open belief in your oneness and the essence of the secret of my conscience and the ties of the kennels of the light of my sight, the lines on my forehead and the hollows and courses of my breath and the nasal cavities of my nose and the courses of the meters of my hearing and whatever my two lips hide and cover up and the motions of my vocalization of my tongue, and the socket of the palate of my mouth and jaw, and the matrices of my dents, and the tasting of my food and my drink, the carrier of my skull, and the tube of the tissues in my neck, and what is included by the cloak of my chest, and the carriers of my cord and my aorta. And he continues enumerating these intricate, and detailed reflections until he comes to the point that he says that even if I was to use all of these, I bear witness that I would not be able to thank you for, uh, I would not be able to thank you properly for the favors that you have granted me. And this again is another aspect of gratitude that we are never able to fully thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because each and every instance of gratitude involves another instance of gratitude because it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has given us that, that benefit. In the Holy Quran, gratitude is considered to be wisdom. If you look at this verse, in the Holy Quran, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا, وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا لُقْمَانَ الْحِكْمَةِ and we gave Luqman hikmah. What was the hikmah? Be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now how does this tie into the topic that we're talking about? How does the practice of gratitude tie in to seeing nothing but beauty? Well, the answer is almost obvious. If everywhere you look, you see the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How can you see anything else but beauty in the whole of creation and in the whole of the universe? Like I said to you before, yes, the actions of human beings may be ugly. But when it comes to the actions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is nothing but beauty. And as we realize each and every bounty that Allah has given us, but not only us, so many people, we can be grateful for the food other people eat. We can be grateful for the comfort and relaxation other people feel. Yeah? We can be thankful for the bounties that are given to animals. We can be thankful for the lives that are given to insects. We can be thankful for things that we don't know about. Because 
there are many things we know about and many things we don't know about. We can be thankful for the things that happen and we can be thankful for the things that don't happen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made this beautiful universe and He has encouraged us to reflect and reflect and reflect on it. He has told us there is no boundary to that reflection. وَإِن تَعُدُّوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْسُوهَا is an encouragement. If you count the bounties, you can't stop. That is an encouragement for those people who keep want to go deeper and deeper and deeper. Because the pleasure that comes out of that is a direct connection with Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses to show himself to us in this way. Many times people ask, why are there no proofs for the existence of Allah? Philosophical proofs in the Holy Quran. You know, why doesn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say that he's the first cause and every effect needs a cause, a cosmological argument or something like that? Why does he focus on these kind of arguments? The reason he focuses on these kind of arguments is number one, it is intimately connected to our fitrah. Number two, it is an argument and an understanding of him that everybody can come to. But perhaps most importantly, it is, it is a reflection on him such that results in immediate connection. When we think about our, our the bounties, we have to immediately recognize the benefactor. So there is a lot to say about gratitude. And it is one of the topics that for me certainly nev is never boring. It is always fresh. Because in reminding ourselves to become, to, to, to spend more time thinking about what we should be grateful for, it reminds me the most to think about those things to be grateful for as well. Like I said to you, anytime you're bored, anytime you have nothing to do, anytime you're waiting on the train, anytime you've got a spare moment, think about something to do with the bounties of Allah. And it can be anything. Look at yourself, look at your body, look at uh, the world, and inculcate this practice because it is the one of the more tangible ones. If you think about how to improve yourself, what should I do to improve? This is one question I get asked many, many times. What should I do to improve? This is one of the clear ones. This is the one of the ones that if it is a program that you keep in your life, it is a program that doesn't end. So inshallah, we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we can become of those people that have gratitude. Gratitude is a vocalization, but in fact, true gratitude is a way of life. It is when we respond, like we said here, with the obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is when we fashion our entire lives in the gratitude of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that tawfiq. We always, always remember the oppressed and the people that are going through difficulties and troubles, and especially the people of Gaza. وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين